Okay, we're back. We're live. Oh, my God, it's Tuesday already. Now, this is Think Tech Hawaii, in case you were on the wrong channel. I'm Jay Fidel, and that's Stephen Sullivan. We're going to do a, a discussion today about after purification at the Davies Pacific Center, 841 Bishop Street in Honolulu. So if you're not in Honolulu, come out here and take a look at that building. Great building. I was in that building many years, many decades. And Stephen is Vice President of Parallel Partners, uh, Vice President of Operations, Regional Vice President of Operations. And he's responsible, among other things, for this property. And we're going to talk about air purification for this property, which is very important in our time of COVID. Hi, Stephen. How are you? Hi, Jay. How are you doing today? Good. So, you know, as I said, I was in that building for a long time. I considered it, uh, you know, a very aesthetic building. Um, I liked it very much. Obviously, I wouldn't have stayed that long. We were there for like 50 years. I'm not kidding. Be better part of my life in that building. <laughs> and... <laughs> It was a quite, you know, it was a, sort of an amazing barometer of the development of the state, you know, from the early 70s on. It was, uh, it was finished in, I think, 73. And um, uh, I think the tenants there were, generally speaking, successful and participated in the, in the economic uh, development of the state. So it's great to talk about this building. It, it, it brings uh, tears to my eyes to talk about this building. So <clears throat> we're talking today about air purification. Now, now, we have talked on this show about many incidents of air purification in many mm, commercial circumstances in the state, uh, but we haven't talked about it in, in, uh, in, in office buildings. And I guess we, we missed out on that because office buildings are very important um, and office buildings are part of the reopening, like it or not. So how has business been? How has, how has the office tower business been over the past year that we would now, you know, focus on air purification. So that's that's an that's a very good question. Um, as you know, the word for this year is uh, pivot, or for 2020 into 2021. So a lot of building owners and operators have had to um, make adjustments so that uh, one to enhance the cleaning measures that we do at our properties. Um, we've looked at different systems that essentially would make uh, cleaner indoor air quality standards and. Um, it's it's just a it's an it's a normal situation for any building operator to continuously want to transition and improve the quality of um, the product that they're providing. But for us, I, we have um, Baby Specific Center, uh, Waterfront Plaza, as you may be aware. And actually, at Waterfront Plaza, we're doing vaccination parking for Pier Two, um, and then we have Waikiki Marketplace and uh, one other asset. So we've we've uh, we're we're surviving. I mean, it's it's a uh, we, we go week by week, obviously, as the tiers improve and uh, vaccination, uh, we get closer to herd mentality. It's, it's definitely a good thing for all of us. Well, um, you know, uh, uh, ThinkTech has not really been affected in terms of its space, you know, by the COVID because we, we have a studio that's right size. We're at 1164, uh, Bishop. Uh, we're waiting for you to acquire that, okay? <laughs> Come around anytime. <laughs> And um, you know uh, we 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 don't have people come in except our engineers and our you know computer guys, but it hasn't affected our space requirements because uh, we're just the right space to go you know into a studio model or an engineering model all the same. So <clears throat> now for you, you probably have tenants. You know, I mean the the trend anyway over the past several years is especially for the nationals to is to reconsider the amount of space they use. So. You know, national firms that, you know, had 10,000 feet of space have shrunk. They mm -hmm. use the space. And I imagine um, that, um, you know, a lot of people, a lot of tenants, including local tenants, have shrunk their space during COVID. You know, they, they didn't come in at all. And uh, when, when renewals came up, they said, thank you very much. We're not doing this. So you, you probably had a reduction in, in occupancy. Am I right? It, it, it varies. Um, so, for example, uh, one of our projects, uh, at Waterfront Plaza, we're, we've been able to maintain occupancy rates in the high 90%. So mm. we're, we're, very, we're very fortunate. We have a lot of government medical tenants. They're not shrinking, um, healthcare, et cetera. And then your normal office tenants. But what's interesting is as we went into COVID, I would say that some parts of the market was looking at, you know what, maybe we need to, to, to downsize or work from home. But then they realized that they lose that bit of collaboration and those, those opportunities to, to, to mentor, to work with others. 
And so we're, we're kind of seeing, I'm not saying that we're back to normal yet, but we're definitely seeing some uptrends. Uh, I, I'm, I'm very excited, especially at, at the retention rates we have at our property is really high. Um, so we, we definitely want you to come back when you're ready. Um, so we, uh, we, we can certainly find a space for you, but yeah, we're, we've been, we're positive. We're very positive. I mean, parking has probably taken a big hit for all owners. Um, as you have less people going to nightclubs and bars and Kakaako in general, um, parking's taken a little bit of a hit, but, uh, that'll bounce back as well. So we're, we're very, we're very optimistic. Yeah. Uh, sure, you know, and well, you know, when you know, when people make this kind of analysis, and they're making it now, they say, you know, you know, I learned a few things about how to do business during COVID. I am now considering the moves I'm going to make, um, you know, in the reopening, um, and I I like operating by remote. I like the virtual. I like Zoom and all that, um, and and that's persuasive for a number of reasons. It's it's not just that we can talk and have a one-on-one -on -one engagement like this. Here today, I'm getting to know you, Stephen. Um, but, but it's also because of driving, right? And all the things that go with driving and parking and all the things that go with parking. You know, when I got out of law school, my first my first boss said to me, Jay, he said, never underestimate the power of parking. <laughs> that was a long time ago. <laughs> and I think of that, you know, very often about parking. So if I'm a, if I'm a, a tenant, you know, making this decision about what I'm going to do on the way back, I think about parking. Yes. And so uh, you know, it's it's the cost, it's the convenience, it's the 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 dynamics of the parking lot and all that. It's, it's part of attracting them back to say we're going to make parking easy for you. Uh, you know, we're, we're going to do what we can not not to have that as an obstacle. <laughs> <laughs> that, and that's that's a really good point because we so we are exploring different things. So, for example, at, at Waterfront Plaza, we are looking at some uh, future things as it relates to parking. But we've actually installed at both Davies Pacific Center and Waterfront um, license plate recognition. So you huh. can just once you're in as a tenant, you just drive in, you drive out, you get that full VIP experience. And then we also have valets at Davies Pacific Center. So I don't know if you, you knew that, but you just drive to the valet on the top floor and they'll go ahead and park the car for you. Um, so we've, we've made that a little bit better. And Jay was correct when um, Jay made sure that the stalls, we have some of the biggest stalls in downtown. And so you if you have a luxury car, it's taken care of. But I personally like driving because I have a Tesla and it's just the coolest car to drive in the world. So. That's just me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, we have to do a show with you about the Tesla. <laughs> I need to know your driving experience from the energy point of view. And, and speaking of energy and, and building operations, let's go to the purification thing. Um, so this is obviously part of a, a thing to be able to say, a branding thing, uh, a de facto thing to be able to say your tenants and visitors that this building is safer than other buildings. This building is, you know, your risk here is less. Um, and so um, this is happening elsewhere. The hotels are doing this. The unions are demanding it, you know, in the hotels. Uh, and in fact, any business, uh, if I go to my doctor's office, you know, he has air, air, air purification. You know, I'm saying, that's good. You know, and when it, it sends me a message that he cares, you know, that he's using technology, that he's at the cutting edge, and that I'm, I'm safer there. Uh, so any business would, would use it. And I, I, you know, hats off to you guys for having thought of this and having, you know, installed it. So tell me, what, what's the technology? How does it work? How does it make me safer? Sure. And it's a, there's a much larger picture, but we'll focus on this aspect. So as a building operator, there's a lot of things that go into an HVAC system or heating, ventilation, air conditioning system. And so we're just focused more on the filters and how, what it filters, right? So as you as we mentioned, buildings are a little bit older in downtown Honolulu. Uh, we were looking at an efficient means of, um, I would say, just providing cleaner air. And so bipolar ionization was one of those methods that we could do. Relatively easy to install. You install it um, in every one of your, your AC systems located on each floor, just, just to dummy it down. And you essentially just need an electrical source about the same as the requirements of an iPad. And the cleaning of it is very simple, like literally go in, wipe it down when you do your quarterly inspections. Um, and the life cycle is about seven to 10 years, but they believe it might actually last 20. And what it does is it, 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 it's ions. 
So ions are naturally occurring. Um, as you know, before electrical storms, for example, you get a high concentration of ions. It helps clean the air. Well, this is what we're doing. When you get into a, a, a commercial building or any building, your um, those concentrations of ions go quite a bit down. And I'm not a scientist, so I explain it the best that I can, but those concentrations of ions are much less. And so what this does is it's artificially creating both positive and negative ions, which attach to particles, um, items like, you know, I'll use COVID. Uh, COVID would be a, a good one. It'll attach to these things and basically neutralize them or make them ineffective. And it makes your filters work better, if that's the easiest way to put it. Okay, so, and, and it operates across that electricity. You have to, you have to plug it in in some way. Yes. It uses the electricity to create the ions, and and the ions what they they uh, they, they essentially fry fry the, the virus and it drops. Am I right? Yes, that's the easiest way because there's when you start talking about the different technologies, there's UV UV hyphen C, you know, light for example. Well, that's that works, but it can only work on things it can see. And then if you see it and it sees you, it can burn your retina. You know, so there's 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 goods and bads with that system, but um, that's an option. I mean, the other one, of course, is ozone. Ozone is bad. You do not want you do not want that in your your indoor environment. So this was a clean, uh, safe op option that uh, was relatively inexpensive, and we started implemented it in several property, not just in Hawaii. Uh, I believe the first installation was in one of our buildings in Arizona, and we're we're doing it in California as well, some other locations. So. We're just, we're just happy. It's the way we look at it. It's another tool in our belt. We still need to make sure that the systems are maintained and ran properly. You still want to get as much fresh air as the system is designed. Um, but this is just another tool in your belt to provide your tenants with the peace of mind that they can come back to their offices and work safely. Does it require any maintenance? It's very minor. Like white, it's wiping down what's called needlepoints, um, which is where the ions come out. But it's, it's very minor. It's, it's in-house, in-house staff. Yes, yeah, in-house staff. In staff. You don't have to bring anybody in from the outside to do it. That's correct. And and one part that you kind of have to do, and this is with any of those type of applications, is you still got to measure it, make sure it's working and operating efficiently. And so there is like an ion counter that you got to use to test. And so after we installed it, we're we, we're right now ninety percent where we want it to be. So we're doing some minor calibrations on a couple of floors, but yeah, we're we're up and operational. So we're very happy. It's actually all installed, at least for Davies, it's all it's all there yeah. fully installed. Yes, yeah, so where oh, does I'm it sorry. go? Where does it go, Stephen? You know, so you have a, a chiller. I assume that you know that may be old technology, but chillers are still yep. they rule the roost in air conditioning in office buildings. Um, they have a chiller and then the chiller uh, cools the, the air and and runs it through you know these these ducts and the like all through the building, and then it returns you know up to be chilled again and so forth. So where where do you physically attach these devices? So we're putting it right be, right after the filters, right before the coils, and essentially it's in what's called a um, air handler area. So um, those that know buildings, especially building managers and operators, will understand that. But it, it's 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 interesting. Because you know you have your chillers, your coin towers, your air handlers, your thermostats, your VAB, all those components are still the same. And they all still have to be operated properly and efficiently. And filters still need to be cleaned. You know, you still need to change out. So all those things occur. So another benefit of this system would be, let's say you take an older building that only has a MERV rating of eight or nine, which is low, but let's just say it has a, a MERV rate a filter that's a less MERV rating. What but this tell does us what a MERV rating is. Um, the easiest way to explain it is it's um, the mer a filter is porous, right? The, the more the more open the pores, the um, lower the rating. You know, so it's more efficient at the higher the number. So, for example, HEPA um, HEPA filters, I believe it's seventeen. Please don't hold me to. I think it's seventeen and up. But um, that would be in your medical facilities. So we have, for example, surgical centers over at Waterfront Plaza. So we do have applications where there's a much higher MERV rating. But in a normal office environment, it's it's a little bit less. Well, what the what the bipolar ionization system does is it effectively it almost it's like it's increasing that MERV rating. Um, and again, we're taking the studies and the information that's available from that company. We're not the experts in that, but 
um, you know, we went through a, quite a bit of due diligence to ensure that what we were putting in is, is going to be a, uh, a good thing for our tenants. Well, aside from the, you know, the, uh, the, uh, um, the tasks involved in installation, is there any downside to do this? It sounds like it's all good. All it's all desirable. upside. There's, there's no downside that we can see at all. We looked at UVC lighting and there's some companies in town that we have great relationships with that can install those uh, those items. And there's, and I don't wanna say which office buildings, but there's office buildings with, with that lighting as well. And they have it where it's safe. So they're good for them, you know, meaning that no one has access to look at those lights. And, um, but we really wanted to find something that was clean, efficient, and relatively uh, easy to install. And we could get it in quickly. Um, as you know, what offices want to get their people back in the office and they just they just want to know there's um, these things are in place for them. And so that was our, our goal. What kind of response are you having from tenants? I assume you're telling the tenants, I mean, this is already public, it's been in the newspapers and it's here on Think Tank, that's very important too. Yes. They're all going to find out about it. So, but what kind of response are you getting? Very positive. So we partnered up, um, the company we work with is called Servitech. Who's, it's a uh, California company that offers janitorial and maintenance serv engineering services here locally. Um, there, and he's this gentleman's a matter expert. I mean, he is an expert at engineering. His name is Eric Sorensen. So we, he actually is the president of their maintenance division. He flew in personally to oversee the installation. So we were supposed to take two weeks to install it. He made sure it got done in three days. Wow. And so we, <laughs> yeah. So, so to be fair, we got it done faster. We, we got it done faster than the press release was ready. And a lot of times that doesn't happen. So we, um, but as our tenants are finding out more, we have different, um, you know, packets of information that we release to them, bullet points. Um, of course, the PBN article where it quotes our, um, uh, one of our managing uh, partners. And so we, we, we're definitely getting that information out. But the, po the, the information coming back, for those tenants that have done a little bit of research to find out, they're like, this is great. Thank you. Yeah. But you talked about it being one element in an arsenal of possibilities of options. Uh, can you talk about the others? Because if I'm coming back, um, yes, I'm, I'm, this is actually number one for me is the air. Because we know it's all airborne and that's, and that's um, you know, the risk. But there are other things too that I, I want to feel good about. I want to feel that for example, I want to feel the people around me, the neighbors in the building, you know, whoever comes in and visits my office, what have you, um, is, is in a controlled setting. I don't want I don't want COVID. I know how dangerous it is. So um, query, what what else are you doing? So when we got when we started the pandemic, we are most and I say this across the board, most of your class A office is already going to have good cleaning methods, good good SOPs, good um, standards that they follow. This, this just made it where we needed to increase that level. And so we did some interesting things. For example, um, we brought in what we felt, uh, we call them parking concierges to help because you, you know there's sometimes you may have to touch something to hit a ticket and things like that. So we brought in parking concierges. Luckily, we, always, we already put in the license plate recognition so tenants can just drive in, visitors can just drive out. Um, we brought in janitorial concierges, and we use the more term concierge is that that person can help in our common areas where people would sit down to have your lunch and things like that. So we, we added enhanced cleaning measures. We brought in those concierges to assist with communicating and telling those, hey, just want to remind you, you, you may have forgot your mask if you could please wear, wear that. We have them prepackaged in different areas because we, we have a, an, a, a a very large quantity of masks standing by. Um, and we just uh, increased our signage, social distancing requirements, looked at the elevators, looked at your common areas, I mean, across the board. And then it's after you get through all your free, you know, when we, you have to get into a reactionary standards as well. The reactionary standards is if there's a reported case, how you handle, okay, where did that person eat? Where did, where did they park their car? Who did they visit? Which restroom? All those things have to be looked at. And I, I feel very confident in our teams um, that we have really been on the tip of the spear as it comes to hitting those problems and uh, communicating with our tenants. So we've, we've been very fortunate, but we have had a couple uh, 
I mean, throughout Honolulu downtown, there's been a couple reported cases you'll see maybe hit PBN or, or Star Advertiser. I'm sure there's been more than that. But in most of those cases, uh, if not all, it's just really good cleaning methods coming in and spraying that area and making sure that it was clean and working with those tenants. So what's my experience like these days? If I, if I come in from uh, Bishop uh, Street and I walk through the main door, and I do want to talk about your redevelopment of the lobby area, but, but right now today, um, what's it like? I mean, I, I see signs. Uh, as a concierge there, he says, uh, you, know, you really should wear a mask. Here's a mask. Um, and he, and he's, he's going to be a little concerned if I'm in a group of people that's all together. To, how does that work? So we still have, on, on both of our sites, we'll still have those on-site persons. Uh, at Davies specifically, we're going to have um, a parking person that will be working her way around the garage. We will have a, um, a janitor concierge uh, working their way through the common areas, that person second floor. And then you're gonna see the security guard walking around and doing the same. And our on-site management, we have uh, a really good on-site management team that will go out and also assist with that. And it's just a matter of, um, I wanna say Honolulu has been great. You, if you've traveled in other cities, it's not the same here. We do definitely have the Aloha. I mean. I, I don't, I would run into one possible problem per every week. I mean, it's very minimal. And uh, we handle that appropriately when that issue comes up. But most of the time, people want to do the right thing. We don't feel like they, they don't. So we're, we're very fortunate. You know, with these vaccines, I, I worry, I'm, I'm happy for the vaccines. We all sure. are. Uh, and soon enough, uh, thanks to uh, Joe Biden and, and, and the federal system, and of course, the aloha in our state, our state healthcare workers, it's really, it's wonderful. Um, but um, there, are, there are people who are gonna be complacent and uh, maybe they don't have the, you know, the, the, the vaccine yet. Um, for some reason they, they figure I'm safe or ha they have the vaccine and they sure. figure I'm safe, so I don't care. I'm, I'm different than the rest of you guys, I don't care. And um, I wonder how that affects this whole, you know, system you're talking about. Um, because uh, A, you have people who don't care and should care, and B, you have people who who really really shouldn't care because they have the vaccine and Honolulu's numbers are going down. How does that affect what you do? Because you know, in a few months' time, this risk, I think, will be less, hmm. and we'll be out of it. And you know, there's a, there's a there's a pathway to getting out of it, and maybe all the steps you're taking will be you know retrospective. Maybe not so necessary in, 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 say, six months or a year. What's your answer to that? I think some things will be dialed back just slightly, but it's a matter of I don't think anyone's going to make any changes now. We're going to continue providing the, the best cleaning we can, enhanced cleaning where we're able to. And that's all your high touch surfaces, like the escalator at Davies, for example. We'll have someone over there quite a bit, wiping down the rails, things of that nature. But I don't think it's going to go away. I think, if anything, Buildings will now start to include more of the hand washing, sanitizing stations. Um, they'll just keep pushing to uh, the mask, I think might be a little bit of a concern in the next few months where people will start getting complacent. But I, I'm hopeful. I think Hawaii is a little different than other locations. We're, we're going to take care of each other and make sure that we're all doing the right thing. So part of the news about uh, the Debbie Specific Center 841 Bishop is that you're um, you're renovating the uh, some of the common spaces, the lobby area, and so forth? Uh, can you talk about that? Can you talk about you know the motivations? Is this part of the branding? Um, are you renovating in such a way as to have further protections that, against um, you know epidemics like this? Uh, can you talk about what you're doing? Sure. Um, so. We are looking at uh, when uh, Parallel became the operators of the property in uh, um, uh, April 2019, I think I got that right. Sorry, June, I think it's June 2019. The, um, we essentially already put the plan together to modernize Davies. Now, as you know, there's some beautiful uh, pieces of art throughout the project that we want to maintain and keep that. I do know, and that was, a, that was an important point in the building. It was really yes. beautiful. It had a local quality to it. It added an aesthetic that no other building downtown had, in my opinion. 
And for example, the elevators, we're looking at, we've already modernized the internal components of the elevators. We're working on the aesthetics of the outside component and that has original coal wood and the coal wood logo. So we're looking at ways to incorporate that into our modernization. But there will be things like electronic directories that'll be placed, uh, a new entryway as you walk in um, right below the escalator, new carpets, lighting, LED lighting to make it more efficient. Um, the parking experience will be slightly different and, and in a better way, just the old parking experience. And when I say old, it's just that the uh, existing parking experience is just a little bit dated, but we're, we're updating that as well. So we're really, we're, we're excited. And right now, if you wanted to come over, I'd be happy to show you like on the seventh floor, we did a spec floor where it's all brand, uh, what we up, upgraded the lobbies. Love to show you that. Hopefully you'll lease out Suite 701, which is our one of our nicer spec suites. <laughs> um, but we have, we've, we're, we're looking at this from a larger perspective, hitting these suites, uh, getting them ready for tenants. And the, um, the communication throughout the market has been very positive for us. Um, we're very strategic in how we do these things. So for example, we still offer um, uh, symmetric uh, fiber. We have fiber coming into the building to the tenant space. So when you go into your space, flip of a switch, you can jump to one gig of service. Of course, you're paying for that additional service, but it's that easy. The phone call registration, it's already wired for you. Um, so we've been very strategic in how we're, we're picking what we're doing to improve the project and making sure that those are the things that our tenants want. And I've, I've been with the project for over 11 years and you, you know, Denise, uh, who's our manager at Davies Pacific Center. They're um, really good teams very care of what we're doing and uh, we, we love our tenants. So we, we take good care of them. That's great. You know, you mentioned, Stephen, you mentioned uh, broadband and, um, you know, obviously think tech is into broadband. We have to have broadband that carries our signal and carries your, your signal to us. Um, and, you know, it's become clear to me in the time of COVID that broadband is really important, you know, for any business more perhaps than it was before. Because of virtual connections like like Zoom, um, but because of everything else that we do these days in the business community. So if a building, you know, tells me that it has wired, pre-wired, pre-organized, uh, fast broadband, I'm really impressed with that. That's a fundamental requirement for most business, most tenants these days. So I think that's a really good idea. And and what I get out of this, by the way, is that what you're doing there in renovating the lobby and, and, and the parking and, and, the, um, and the broadband is you're, you're setting up a new frontier or you're, you're pushing a new frontier. You're creating a new model. Uh, I mean, I don't know if you see it that way. I, I, I always saw you know, Davies <laughs> as a kind of flagship building. But it was at the, at the front end of things. And, and this is consistent with that. And, and, I, and I feel that what you're doing is uh, it's actually a statement about the new generation, if you will, of office buildings in Honolulu and, and maybe around the country. Your thoughts? I, I agree 100%. I, we love what we do. We want to stay ahead of the game. And when we did the symmetrical internet service, every tenant, we flipped the switch initially with 20 megs, which is slow, and that was years ago. Now we have it 50 megs symmetrical up and down. And then we offered in our common areas for like Waterfront Plaza, we flew 100, a 100 meg Wi-Fi signal throughout all our open areas. Um, so we, we find that to be very important and um, tenants, we get great feedback from that. And a license plate recognition, modernizing the elevators, all those things play, play into that. Yeah, very important. So um, I, you know, I see this as, um, as a statement of how, of how it will be. And I also see, and maybe you could cover this, the, the, the improvements you're making in the lobby and so forth, all those things, a lot of those things are visual things where you don't have to touch anything. Uh, those things, um, you know, help in branding the building as a, call it a COVID safe building. <laughs> yes. Am I right? I mean, have you, you know, you said, you, you know, you set this up in 2019 and so forth. A lot of things have happened since 2019. Have, have you right. modified this or considered this as a, as a point of the renovation now with the experience of COVID? Absolutely. And there's a lot of infrastructure improvements that all we've done prior to coming into COVID that were already accomplished. Like at Waterfront, we spent uh, quite a bit to upgrade our entire chiller system. 
um, Davies, we've upgraded chiller elevators, you can imagine. So a lot of those things tenants don't necessarily see because it's behind the scenes, but that shows our commitment in ensuring that our buildings are, are going to be the top of the line for years to come. So. so we talked earlier about the space requirements and so forth. And uh, you know, I think a lot of a lot of companies are thinking now, now really, about how much space they really need and what the new office model is, you know, how much is going to be virtual, how much, as you said, you know, you need personal engagement, you need to you need to be in a conference room, you have to, you know, see the sweat on his brow to make the deal. <laughs> Whatever it is. And um, you know, they're 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 considering those things, both the nationals and the locals, and query. You know, is architecture is building out the building out process, uh, you know, in a building like Davies changing or will it change because of you know, tenant preferences in terms of space and design in, in the new post COVID or at least um, hopefully post COVID world? It's it's pretty similar, but the difference is I, I think tenants looking at in the market, they're, they're not sure if they should do the open concept or do back, go back to the private offices. And again, you go back to the collaboration and um, you want to add those things that you're trying to compete against another company. And so I think it'd be a little bit of a mix. And like Zoom for me is just one tool in our belt. We don't, we don't use this exclusively. We still like those face-to-face -face meetings if done safely and socially distant. But um, uh, we use it when we can to just be more efficient with our tenants. So I, I think it's a, it's a mix. It's a mix. I would say um, we're, we're still building out spaces. We're still doing the carpet and paint, as you can imagine, years past. You still add those private offices. So none of that has changed. And we already wired uh, for the, uh, Brent, um, the fiber. So that's, that's a positive. Um, but I think tenants are, um, they're cautiously optimistic. I'm, ecstatic. I think in six months, a lot of this will be behind us and we will see tenants coming back into the workforce. I'm, I'm not as, as much worried as the next person, I guess you'd say. Yeah, well, it's, it's the perfect time to do it, really. Mm -hmm. This is the inflection point right now, you know, this month, even this week. Um, and, and query, whether other buildings are doing this of their own motion or whether they're following you, I mean, do we have a trend going on? Where, are you, where do you fit on the trend line? Trend line in terms of uh, when new tenants are looking or- No, other, other buildings doing these oh. kinds of things. Um, I mean, I think all the buildings are competing for that same, you know, those same 10,000 square foot tenants. I, I think it really comes down that if we're all competing on a, a level playing field, then it's gonna be the people that are operating those buildings and how that relationship is. And uh, I, I think it's important. So we, we put a lot towards our, Instead of just customer service, customer loyalty. When we, we get that tenant, I, I want you to stay at the building for 40 years. And so it's my job to make that uh, a, an experience that you'll remember. So I want to say it's moving towards a little bit on the hospitality side and just running an <laughs> office building. But I, I welcome it. I mean, I've been at Waterfront for 11 years. And again, we rarely lose a tenant. And it's normally because they've moved to the mainland or something of that nature. And we um, we're, we're just been very fortunate with the tenants that we've got. Yeah, and you know what? It's not only the office buildings. I mean, this kind of technology, your approach mm -hmm. to it. Um, I think you know lots of other kinds of you know high-rise type buildings would benefit from this. I mean, I remember in the early days of COVID, everybody was uh, including, especially including the uh, the hospitals and healthcare buildings, were using uh, ultraviolet light. And it became clear that you, you couldn't be in the same room as the device, otherwise you'd hurt yourself with the light and your eyes and so forth. Yes. Um, so they would benefit to, to know what you're doing. And I think after a while, it'll all settle down where these things will become, what do you want to call it, building standard. So yes. you're achieving a new building standard here. And I think that's probably gonna ripple right through the, the community, not only for office buildings, but for all, all multi-story buildings. I, and I agree. We, when we did the parking license plate recognition, um, we were one of the first office properties to do it. Um, I would say other buildings shortly thereafter followed suit. They saw the effectiveness of that. So um, yes, we spent the time doing the due diligence and they benefit it. But uh, in the, at the end of the day, Honolulu benefits. So we've all, you know, all have increased that level of service. So 
And that's kind of how it's going to be across the board. You, it, one building will do something that's great and others will follow suit. And um, yeah, that's that's normal. But we just have a phenomenal uh, team. I mean, I worked for Shiler Group for 10 years and then we moved over to their uh, one of their partners, uh, Peril Capital Partners. And it's been a great company. I mean, they're just, they're cutting edge. They're top of the line. We do deals quickly. Um, and that's important when you're in the leasing negotiations. Uh, we just got a really good team. And then, um, yeah, we've just been very fortunate. So that's great. Great to, to see you and talk to you, Stephen. I, I feel like I ought, to, I ought to walk down down Bishop Street and visit the building, say hello to Denise, all that. Yes. Uh, and, and see what it looks like. <laughs> I would I welcome we, you to stop by. <laughs> this is just another you know, example of how COVID has changed us, uh, made us uh, more aware of things, uh, made, made our lives actually in the end, made our lives better. Well, thank you so much. Stephen Sullivan, Parallel Partners and the Davies Building, 841 Bishop. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir.